Hello friends. Today we are going to learn about the formation and structure of hemoglobin. The normal hemoglobin range for males and females. Types of hemoglobin that is normal and abnormal. The fate that is breakdown of hemoglobin, iron metabolism and variants of hemoglobin. Now let's start with the formation of hemoglobin. Synthesis of hemoglobin begins in the polychromatophyll erythroblast and continues even into the reticulocyte stage of the red blood cell. Therefore, when reticulocytes leave the bone marrow and pass into the blood stream, they continue to form minute quantities of hemoglobin for another day or so until they become mature erythrocytes. Now, Let's see the basic chemical steps in the formation of hemoglobin. In the first step, succinyl coenzyme A formed in the Krebs metabolic cycle binds with glycine to form a pyrrole molecule. In the second step, four pyrroles combine to form protoporphyrin 9. In the next step, protoporphyrin 9 combines with iron to form the heme molecule. Then each heme molecule combines with a long polypeptide chain, a globin synthesized by ribosomes forming a subunit of hemoglobin called a hemoglobin chain. Each hemoglobin chain has a molecular weight of 16,000. In the final step, four of these in turn bind together loosely to form the whole hemoglobin molecule. This is the structure of a hemoglobin chain. There are several slight variations in the different subunit hemoglobin chain depending on the amino acid composition of the polypeptide portion. The different type of chains are designated as alpha chain, beta chains, gamma chains and delta chains. The most common form of hemoglobin in the adult human being is a combination of two alpha chains and two beta chains. This hemoglobin is called as hemoglobin A and has a molecular weight of 64,458. Hemoglobin F, which is found in the fetus and disappears after birth. It is made up of two alpha chains and two delta chains. Thalassemia, which is a hemoglobin disorder, is caused by mutations in which the production of either the alpha or beta chains is reduced, resulting in either alpha thalassemia or beta thalassemia which is also called as Cooley's anemia. Now as we all know, each hemoglobin chain has a heme prosthetic group containing an atom of iron. And because there are four hemoglobin chains in each molecule of hemoglobin, each of these can bind loosely with one molecule of oxygen, making a total of four molecules of oxygen that can be transported by each hemoglobin molecule. The types of hemoglobin chains in the hemoglobin molecule determine the binding affinity of the hemoglobin for oxygen. Abnormalities of the chains can alter the physical characteristics of the hemoglobin molecule as well. Let's take a look on this table of all the inherited disorders of hemoglobin. Here, in case of normal globin chains, if alpha thalassemia or beta thalassemia occurs, then reduced or no production of alpha and beta globin chains occurs respectively and dysfunctional hemoglobin or dysfunctional erythropoiesis occurs. Whereas in case of abnormal globin chains in HBS that is sickle cell anemia valine is replaced by glutamic acid on beta globin chain which causes aggregation shortened survival of the red blood cells. Whereas in HBC, lysine is replaced by glutamic acid. In HBE, glutamic acid is replaced by lysine. And in HBM, tyrosine is replaced by histidine. Now, let's talk about iron metabolism. As iron is important for the formation not only of hemoglobin, but also of other essential elements in the body. Example, myoglobin, cytochromes, etc. It is important to understand the means by which iron is utilized in the body. Now let's talk about the total quantity of iron in the human body. So the total quantity of iron in the body averages about 4 to 5 grams. 
about 65% of which is in the form of hemoglobin about 4% is in the form of myoglobin 1% is in the form of various heme compounds that promote intracellular oxidation 0.1% is combined with the protein transferrin in the blood plasma and 15 to 30% is stored for later use mainly in the reticuloendothelial system and liver parenchymal cells principally in the form of ferritin now let's take a look on transport and storage of iron this can be explained with the help of a diagram when iron is absorbed from the small intestine it immediately combines in the blood plasma with a beta globulin apotransferrin to form transferrin which is then transported to plasma the iron is loosely bound in the transferrin and consequently can be released to any tissue cell at any point in the body in the cell cytoplasm iron combines mainly with a protein apoferritin to form ferritin this iron stored as ferritin is called storage iron smaller quantities of the iron in the storage pool are in an extremely insoluble form called as hemosiderin when the red blood cells have lived their life span of about 120 days and are destroyed the hemoglobin released from the cells is ingested by monocyte macrophage cells there iron is liberated and is stored mainly in the ferritin pool to be used as needed for the formation of new hemoglobin now let's take a look on the daily loss of iron from the human body a man excretes about 0.6 mg of iron each day mainly into the feces additional quantities of iron are lost when bleeding occurs for a woman additional menstrual loss of blood brings long term iron loss to an average of about 1.3 mg per day so this was all about hemoglobin its formation structure types and about iron metabolism see you all in the next video till then stay safe take care and don't forget to subscribe the channel like the video and comment your views thank you